Today we're going to go through some really basic stuff uh, on eclipse safety, on eyesight safety for the upcoming solar eclipse in Cairns and uh, I'm taking this video, uh, the eclipse is next week, it's only a week away so hopefully people have got enough time to look at this video. Um, just for the general person, the, uh, the best thing you can possibly use is a pair of eclipse glasses or an eclipse viewer. Um, these are eclipse shades, they're Rainbow Symphony. Um, they use a black polymer filter, incredibly safe. If you decide to purchase a pair of these, between five to ten dollars, um, really cheap, really easy way of viewing the eclipse, and uh, like I said, incredibly safe. Wear them like a pair of sunglasses if you want. Um, some people recommend uh, the viewers, they're easy to hold up to your face, might be better for children, they're definitely better for people with prescription glasses. Because um, if anybody's worn 3D glasses in a cinema and they already wear prescription glasses, they can know how, they know how hard they are to get on. Um, so shades might not be the best option. Uh, go for a pair of viewers, uh, they're really easy to use. These things, like I said, are really safe. Um, I sold them back in 2002 for the eclipse in Sejuna through uh, South Australia and uh, yeah th they were awesome back then um, I suppose uh, th the only thing that I, I warn people about with using these is do not use them in combination with other optical equipment such as binoculars, telescopes or cameras um, the film's great for, for filtering out um, harmful radiation um, from the sun, ultraviolet, intense light and UV but they will not withstand the uh, concentrated heat coming out the back of a camera, uh, a pair of binoculars or an unfiltered telescope. Um, that's not what they're for. Use these as directed and they are perfectly fine 100%. Oh, I've uh, sat with a pair of shades on once and stared at the full sun for uh, well over half an hour. Um, my eyes were perfectly fine afterwards, they're still fine to this day and the only thing I got was a burnt, some burnt forehead so uh, they, they're great to use. Um, I'm selling them this year, you can grab them on my eBay store buy them off other people, I, I don't care. These are a really cheap, affordable and very safe way to view the Eclipse. Um, you will really enjoy the experience if you use a pair of these. Um, a lot of people talk about uh, projection methods. Um, you put uh, a pinhole on a piece of card and project the, the image of the eclipse sun on another piece of card. Woohoo, geez, that's fun. Um, if you've ever done it before, if you've ever seen anybody doing it, it's as boring as all hell. Um, you really do not get the thrill of the experience using the pinhole method. If you want to use it, go ahead. But uh, everybody that I've seen using the pinhole method ends up taking quick glimpses of the sun anyway um, because it is incredibly boring. And in the last few minutes, uh, just before totality, uh, if you're lucky enough to be right under the shadow around Cairns or Port Douglas, um, the projection method doesn't work too well. There's not an, an, really enough light for it to work very well. And that's when you see people glimpsing the sun, trying to catch views of it just before totality. So uh, that's where Eclipse Shades are good. You can watch the, the whole thing. Once totality occurs, once uh, the sun's completely covered by the moon and the, the uh, sun's atmosphere, the corona is on display, that's when you take these off and you can safely view the eclipse without any filters. If you're going to use the projection method, what I recommend you use, big piece of technology here, is a colander. And uh, what this will do is uh, it'll give you a really, really wicked um, image of a of hundred uh, little eclipses. You, you project that onto a piece of paper or onto the ground and take a photograph. Uh, that will look really cool and uh, it's great for science projects, for, for, uh, for school projects, things like that. So uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the little tricks you can use. Some, something else that's got a lot of holes in it. Make, make the projection method a little bit more interesting. Um, when using the projection method, don't do what uh, I, uh, I spoke to one gentleman about when uh, he was a kid um, in the 1940s. He watched an eclipse in Australia 
using a, a projection method. Unfortunately for him, he looked through the hole and he did that for about half an hour and uh, it burnt a lesion onto the outside of his eye and roasted his, his the back of his eye and uh, he's 100% blind in one of his eyes and he has been since he was a kid because of the eclipse. So uh, yeah, projection method, make sure you know what you, you're doing. Project the image onto a piece of paper or the ground. Do not look through any of the holes. Um, mums and dads, one of the most dangerous things you, that you can have around eclipse time is a pair of binoculars. And uh, the reason why is that if your kids get a hold of these and they think that they're going to watch the eclipse uh, close up, which everybody wants to do, everybody wants to see a close up image of the eclipse, these things are the absolute worst thing you can have um, if they're unfiltered, uh, if people don't know what they're doing because if you point that at the sun, all of a sudden you have 100% blindness in both eyes. There's no operation, there are no pharmaceuticals, um, there's nothing you can do to restore your vision once it is burnt uh, by uh, intense concentrated solar radiation. Uh, and that'll be it. She's all over. You're, you're, you're blind once you do that. So mums and dads, uh, school teachers, make sure you hide these um, so your kids don't get a hold of them. Um, the other thing is uh, telescopes, obviously pretty bad. The only reason they're better is because you're only destroying one eye at a time. Um, binoculars are doubly worse because you can do both eyes at the same time. To give you some idea, um, of how intense the radiation can be focused through a pair of binoculars or, or a telescope. Um, when I was a kid, I used to use the projection method to uh, uh, sketch sunspots, and I'd project the image of the sun directly on a piece of paper and, and trace sunspot images. I caught my telescope on fire once. There was smoke coming out of the telescope, and it was on fire. Uh, and that was just through internal reflections in inside the telescope that was doing that. Um, it wasn't even the, the really concentrated stuff that was coming out the eyepiece end. So yeah, if you've got a, a telescope um, or a pair of binoculars, I seriously recommend it. Don't go anywhere near them eclipse time. Hide them, lock them up. Warn your kids about the dangers. Um, it would be a really, really sensible thing to do. Um, if you want to get a, a close look at, at the eclipse, you can be guaranteed that some professional, uh, someone, uh, even the newspaper will have proper equipment and you'll be able to see images in the newspaper. Um, there'll be stuff on TV, you can see it later, you can record it to, to remember the event. Um, I still see lots of people who don't know what they're doing try to photograph eclipses. Uh, to give you some idea of, of my setup, this is what I'm using to photograph the eclipse. Now you'll notice that I have a proper solar filter on the primary lens on the front of the telescope. This is the front just here. Right? Uh, so this filters out all the intense solar radiation before it goes through the telescope, and that's critically important. Solar filters don't work at the end of a the telescope, they work at the front. Uh, so I'm going to use that to photograph the partial phase. But the big thing, what everybody wants to, to look at is obviously totality. Um, and just as totality starts, I'll be taking that solar filter off so my telescope is completely unfiltered. Down this end I've got, uh, I've got a Canon 5D Mark III and I have a promote control uh, which will be wirelessly triggered. Um, the reason for that is to keep the vibrations down. There's a little, little wireless controller. Um, I can click that, sets the promote control off. I can do over 40 exposures all automatically at, uh, at different exposure levels. Um, you know, so it all operates uh, on its own. It, it can track the sun as it's moving during the exposure. So, yeah, seriously, if you're thinking about trying to photograph the eclipse, um, there's lots of other people with more complicated gear out there than I've got, uh, and they'll be taking better photos than me. You know, rely on other people's photos. If you have a, a, a camera yourself, um, and you accidentally, you know, if you point it with a big zoom lens at the sun uh, during the partial phase of the eclipse or, or even close to totality, you know, uh, and you cop a glimpse of the sun through a high powered zoom lens, you really risk severely damaging, injuring your eyes. So uh, there you go, everybody. 
and I hope that gives you some idea. Um, like I said, I recommend for, for everybody, you'll get a good good glimpse of the uh, Eclipse with a pair of Eclipse shades or viewers. If uh, you watch the transit back in June this year, you'll know that that was, that was a pretty cool way of, uh, of watching the transit of Venus across the sun. Uh, you can use these just as well. And, uh, Hope everybody has a, a safe and very enjoyable eclipse and uh, clear skies everyone.